Hello guys, Mukas here. This video is gonna be about uh, gameplay problems that annoys me the most in Planetside 2. I hope this video will get the devs attention, so hopefully these problems get fixed someday. It is still my favorite game by far. Uh, I can't really play anything else at the moment, but uh, I understand why people quitted like uh, Buscut Psycho because some problems can really get annoying with the time so I hope some of these problems can get fixed someday uh, also this is my own opinion uh, I could be wrong but I have a lot of experience in game and uh, I try to be the most uh, impartial I could also some of these problems are really game breaking and some of them are just annoying but they can really harm the game in the long term so let's begin guys so the first problem that I thought about is that because of the lattice system the spawn choices at when redeploying at the warp gate are too limited they don't get you to the front line when where the fight is happening and sometimes I have to redeploy like two or three times to get to the location I want and sometimes I just don't get where I want it's uh, like very frustrating when you just log in the solution I found is instant action, but you don't choose where you go. Or I join like a random squad and I see if they have a beacon or a sandy. But this second option is not possible if I just created a squad uh, in the warp gate. So second problem that I thought about is uh, that the debris are really dangerous. Uh, vehicle debris that insta ships your vehicle are really frustrating. Right now, like, one tank wreckage can block an entire vehicle column from advancing. Uh, I'm okay that they kill infantry and uh, maybe they could damage vehicle, but uh, right now that uh, the fact that they insta ship your vehicle is really bad. Uh, also, I think the debris could be like smaller and they could, could last longer, so they could create like temporary cover and uh, they don't uh, block uh, any vehicle that tries to pass but the most important in my opinion is that they get like a, a damage nerf because uh, it's really too dangerous to get closer to the to the debris any debris uh, the third problem that i thought about is that spawn rooms offers really too few entrances their design is leading to the spawn room warrior behavior there's only like uh, three or four ways out and uh, like a bunch of enemy can be right next to the spawn room without the defending without the defenders knowing it like the little small spawn rooms at uh, coramed labs or ti alloys they can be uh, camped really easily by higher buildings or terrain or trees uh, bigger spawn rooms like at holding pass really frustrates me because they are huge inside but they only have four tiny doors at the basement no windows at the first level and the top level is very exposed to like uh, snipers uh, on higher terrain and mag riders like uh, camping the higher hills So fourth pro problem that I thought about is that vehicle terminal placement can really can be improved so gunners can get e inside uh, easily. Um, also like the auto forward when you just spawn the vehicle can be shortened so you don't create like these huge traffic jams like at the crown where there's, there's only one vehicle terminal and uh, where if you spawn a flash in the middle of the traffic jam you have really high risks of uh, getting squished and losing your vehicle. So fifth problem is that there is n there is an option to call for a gunner but it's really not easy to use. You have to hold A and uh, have a direct line of sight on your on your uh, wanted gunner so it's really not uh, efficient. Uh, I should also be able to lock the vehicle for all non-engineer classes. Uh, I should have the choice, like if you're not an engineer, you don't get in my vehicle. 
and you could also talk about it in the tutorial and uh, where you'll explain that it's better to be engineer if you want to be gunner so you can repair uh, and the sixth problem is that the driver doesn't see the ammo count for his uh, gunner or gunners and uh, this can be very important when to you're resupplying and you don't want to lose time or sometimes even the gunner forgets about his ammo count so the driver can be aware uh, also allow us to see the reload circle of the gunner when you're driving it's really important for vehicle team play like in harassers so the driver can know exactly when his gunner is ready to shoot and when he's not so problem seven is that the bolt action rifles don't kill when uh, uh, even if uh, it's headshots if the if the target is wearing nano weave rank two or more it i find it very unfair because uh, of how it's hard to line up headshots on moving targets in this game and i really regret that because uh, i like sniping like everyone and uh, and some awesome headshots can result in your own fail because if the target don't die you have just wasted the bullet and compromised your position that can really be bad for the infiltrator so number eight is that the flash doesn't have the 360 view like harassers have and uh, it's really annoying when driving to be stuck like in this tunnel vision uh, i would love th that the flash can get uh, like more visibilities on the sides uh, even if the gun is not following the view maybe the gun could keep his uh, angle but you can uh, still view uh, like on your sides and behind you uh, i recently saw a video posted by vanulabs showing like uh, flash stacks where he's uh, able to do the 360 view so maybe it's coming Number 9 is that the air game is very elitist and uh, almost inexistent above TR territory uh, because uh, like strikers have an insane range and uh, very high damage and uh, whenever I try to pull my reaver and I get close to hotspots uh, when I get locked that uh, can really end very fast uh, actually, that's, uh, I just want to do some air-to-air -air fights because that's the most enjoyable fights in in, uh, in the game almost. But you always get uh, get interrupted by some lock-ons, and it's ruin it ruins all the fight. So I would like that to the strikers can get balanced, so the air game can get uh, better. So number 10 is that the alerts are getting really boring. I think they should be more varied. Uh, of course I enjoyed the 20% boost, uh, experience boost, but right now we capture territory all the time in Planicide 2, so I don't see the point of doing alerts that make us capture territory. They could add some spell special alerts with the special type of vehicles, like only harassers or only only flashes, only night time, it could be very more varied but right now it's uh, really getting bored, boring uh, and the populations are getting in imbalanced, more and more imbalanced on Woodman at least. The best alerts are actually Indar alerts where everyone stays on Indar and the fights get uh, more intense but uh, that's actually nothing special compared to normal play also, uh, at each alert start, all the players can be redeployed at the warp gate and all territory could be reset equally except the central base like the crown that will be neutral and uh, this could create some awesome uh, air and ground battles at each uh, alert beginning and the players will feel like more involved because they, they will see all their faction regrouped and going for the fight and it's gonna be epic like uh, charge going for the best places to uh, to have the hate advantage and so on also uh, number 11 is that flashlights are completely useless and uh, I would love that they they 
maybe they could get uh, they could be default for all soldiers like maybe shoulder mounted and uh, they we could buy uh, different shapes and colors with the station cache that could add some really cool variety uh, for number 12 it's not that bad but I think that the handguns are really huge especially the commissioner that really looks like a freaking cannon <laughs> I think it's uh, really oversized so number 13 I think that we should be able to search the cooldown timer of the spawn beacon if they get destroyed because losing a beacon is uh, really is really penalizing the squad for too long because of that cooldown and uh, that the Sundays doesn't last a minute and galaxy dropping is not always an option so maybe we could buy them with infantry resources and completely get rid of the cooldown timer uh, also I would love that we get a notification when when the beacon get destroyed because right now I I have to be dead or ask a dead squad mates to know if the beacon is still up and uh, I'd like this to change so number 14 I think that uh, max are that are getting revived over and over are creating boring stalemates in bigger facilities like biolabs especially biolabs I'm not sure if it's due to maxes or base design but uh, biolabs fights are almost always boring stalemates at the landing pads or around the teleporter room and that's really bad like uh, so maxes could only maybe get revived three times and uh, to the fourth death they will have to respawn and maybe it could balance things uh, a little more so problem 15 is a big one for me uh, I think that senders are too weak for their prices now they could use like more guns and more armor they can hold 12 persons but only two can shoot uh, maybe one more gun would be nice and I think that the uh, AMS ability should be default on all Sundays so they could have uh, more variety on their uh, ability slots uh, maybe when also when they are deployed they could create a, like a small radar radius like maybe 20 meters so it helps the engineer defending it uh, like if uh, an infiltrator was bombing recon dots close to the sandy and resupplying uh, before the the buggy update it was like my favorite vehicle because uh, I could create fights wherever I want and uh, now all the best sandy placements are well known and the deployed sandy doesn't last a minute like uh, if he doesn't have mine guard he doesn't last a minute if he has mine guard he can last like two or three minutes but he's gonna get c4 or something because uh, sandy sunder placements are very obvious now like may, uh, at crossroads behind the c point or behind the b point they have to deploy in the open if a tank comes out he destroys it so maybe they could uh, have uh, some more love because Sundays are creating the good fights so I'd love that they get uh, they, they last a little longer and that the driver is getting more rewarded because right now plus 2 XP is really not enough it's like one third every 150 25 uh, spawns it's, uh, it's nothing so number 16 is that when I invite uh, someone who's already in a squad he's not even notified uh, it's really annoying like maybe this could change easily number uh, 17 is uh, that now that uh, with the with the lattice some fights are very redundant and repetitive like uh, as NC we switched to warp gate very recently and uh, wherever I log on on Indar it's almost the same fights like uh, between Quartz Ridge and uh, Indar excavation site uh, or at Alatum and uh, there is almost no progression possible uh, and this is because like between Indar excavation site and Quartz Ridge there is a huge death zone where we cannot cross if you without being destroyed by strikers because there is no cover for like 400 meters 
uh, also all the terrain around Quartzridge is completely impracticable by uh, vehicles but especially infantry like there is a huge area around Quartzridge that is completely unexploited I never fought there like it's like useless terrain that uh, blocks you from getting from to Hajvar and try to flank because uh, there is only one road and it's always camped by a shitload of uh, AV turrets and strikers and maxes and the progression is impossible without flanking. Problem 18 is also a big one is that uh, bow labs are really too hard to take because they have too few entrances and like in months of gaming I almost never saw the NC tanking Taking a biolab if the defenders are already there, like they have to leave the biolab for an alert or something, so we can take it. Uh, almost all the biolab fights are happening on the landing pads or around the teleporter rooms. Um, it's uh, so bad that I really don't like it. So I stay away from from these bases in at the moment. I really don't like to attack biolabs because it's uh, like you're just getting uh, farmed. Also, we don't have any reasons to fight for the base, uh, the basement. All the the basement level around the biolab is like useless uh, because you can't get inside the biolab from the basement. Uh, you have to place the sandy below the landing pad. Uh, it will get destroyed very quickly. And even if it lasts, like the defender, the attackers are gonna get stuck on the landing pads because the the entrance is too tiny and like too easily defendable if there is more than uh, than a platoon inside the battle lab. So it leads to like very boring stalemates. So that's why I, I almost never fight in battle labs if uh, we have to attack it because I know it's a lost cause. So I would love like more entrances for the biolabs uh, and also more reasons to fight for the basement. Actually I really like uh, how they look but uh, really there's they, these are not really fun bases to fight in. Almost uh, the entire uh, space inside the biolab is not exploited. All the fight is happening is uh, small areas. Also, buildings don't have uh, any stories. Like it's uh, only one level, but the the rooftop is like very huge. So maybe it could use like uh, more stories. So with the multiple story buildings with stairs and jumpers inside. So maybe it will create like more di dynamic fights. Uh, that's it for 18. Number 19 is uh, also an important one is that amp stations are really too hard to take because of the two shield generators that take 100, 1 minute and a half to go down and you need to take the two of them so you can get inside. Also like a light assault can't even get inside without taking these shields like in tech plants you have to go through these shields and it takes really long and the uh, defenders have uh, really easy access to the generators from the tunnels to repair them so he, actually the shields go if they go down they get repaired very quickly so the attackers get uh, trapped inside and it repeats it repeats so i think it could be much better like uh, if uh, each shield can be linked to one door so uh, attackers can get uh, inside easily or that may be given access to light assaults to get inside without e without taking the shields down or maybe add more add more control points outside the amp station like in the courtyard two points on the courtyard and one point inside maybe this will uh, make the amp station fights better because right now I think they are uh, like never ending and the attackers almost uh, always get uh, um, uh, flushed away 
So number 20 is also a big one for me is the I would like that uh, you let us go to the map, map directly after dying. Like don't force us to stare at the skill screen. Uh, the information there can, could be in the chat box. Uh, where like you, you'll be notified that you have been killed by uh, this player and his battle rank. And which weapon he was using. Also maybe the range. And um, his faction. Also, the same could be uh, applied to the people you killed, so you know what is their battle rank, uh, which weapon was used, the range, all this in the chat box. So, um, number 21 is, uh, is a pretty big one for me as a video maker. I would like that there is a, a kill count indicator below the cert indication. Like, uh, the kill count will reset to zero each time you die. And uh, also, uh, notify us uh, if we are a high threat or an extreme threat for the enemies. So it will be like a nice addition to know it. So number 22 is uh, can be really important. Like, uh, I would like that the in-game recorder that I use a lot could record uh, in-game voices. Uh, like uh, chat voices for like more epic gameplay like sometimes there is speeches and some cool stuff happening on the chat it would be really great that the in-game recorder records that too so number 23 is uh, that I would love that that I would like that the HUD, the HUD can be enlightened so like I would like that we will be able to disable what we want and keep what we want like we want to hide the map, the ammo count, the search, the chat box, all the alert indication so we could record like uh, better looking gameplay and also maybe maybe getting more FPS's because uh, I know that I, when I turn off the HUD I get uh, a little more FPS's so that could be a really nice addition. And uh, number 24 is uh, the strikers and lock-ons in general. I think that lock-ons in uh, a very massive game in uh, like Planetside do uh, can really hurt the game. Like, may like for example, there is a huge death zone uh, between Indoor Excavation and Quartz Ridge, like I said, where you cannot cross without being striked. Uh, even a Sandy with blockade armor is gonna die in this uh, 400 meters death, do death zone. <laughs> so uh, I'd like that uh, maybe the strikers can become a dumb fire weapon. So there will be like less lock-ons. Only the annihilator, the and the, the I think the hawk and the, another one. Number 25 is about the Zoe Maxes that uh, I think are completely unbalanced uh, compared to the other faction Maxes. Like the NC Max can't compete with the Zoe Max, it's obvious. And uh, also it creates like a very like permanent advantage over like uh, organized uh, Vanu peop uh, Vanu the Vanu faction. It's very obvious on Woodman. Like, uh, yeah. when you see the Zoe Max incoming, you know that it's lost. You can't do anything ag against that. So I would love that it uh, get balanced. Maybe buff the, the, um, the NC Max ability and the TR Max ability. But it uh, can't uh, stay like it is now because it's unbalanced and unfair. And that's it, I think, for now. Uh, maybe there'll be a second episode because I forgot for sure a lot of problems. Uh, if you agree with one of these points, please uh, support the thread that I'll post on the forums. So it will be, it will have more attention to the devs. Uh, also, if you don't agree with what I said, please uh, tell me why in the comment section. I would love to hear why. And uh, also your opinions of uh, about the balance of the game and uh, the bugs that annoys you the most and that's it guys <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed guys this is uh, the end of the first part and uh, see you later have a good day <laughs>